Hello, my name is Amy Ecker and welcome to my channel. So today I'm doing this bright red eye look using this palette, Wizardry and Witchcraft from Storybook Cosmetics. So I'm absolutely intrigued by Storybook Cosmetics. I have been ordering their things as they roll them out. And in fact, I am waiting for their newest palette to get to my door any day. And any day is never soon enough for someone that likes makeup. But let's go to wizardry, wizardry and witchcraft. So this bad boy came and um, my sister and I both have this. And so we decided to do a, a collaboration using this, but also giving interesting facts. So kind of a get ready with me. And I say interesting facts. I don't find my life that interesting, so you know, whatevs. But she did give 10 questions for me to answer during this chatty get ready with me using the wizardry and witchcraft book. Bear with me. Um, some of the questions she asked actually were really, really tough. And the more I thought about some of them, the harder that they became. And I was like, oh, she really gave me some doozies. But I think she put kind of the harder ones maybe in the middle and she went light on me in the beginning so that I could get relaxed. And then she asked some hard ones and I wasn't for sure how I answered. So I made my own little rules around the question then answered the question. Then um, the ending, those were no brainers for me. So very easy for me to answer. Now let's talk about this palette. So this palette, this eye look that I created today is using several of them. Uh, probably a good maybe third, third of them for this look. So it does look very red, but I did layer some colors and use some that you probably wouldn't think that are actually on my eyes right now, but they are and you're going to see it. Now as far as the colors in this, we have Broomstick, Sorcerer, Cloak, uh, Potions, Prophecy, I can't read that word, Merlin, Ethereal, not sure what that word says. I think this one says Spree, Spree Look. Uh, the writing on here is so hard to read. Charms and Jinx. Storybook Cosmetics is absolutely adorable. So it comes very much like a book. I am a huge reader. I have read more books than I can count on in my lifetime already and I have a ton more to do. I actually prefer reading over watching TV unless it's YouTube. I will watch a lot of YouTube videos. But this palette is absolutely adorable. It is, I will tell you the colors blend really nice. This one down here had some more fallout than some of the other ones did. So I don't understand exactly why maybe one had more fallout than the rest. But overall, the, the colors went on super nice. They blended well, totally not what I was expecting. I'll be honest with the, you know, kind of with the exterior package and how beautiful it was, I thought that's kind of where the details ended. I did not think, I was hopeful, I was hopeful, but sometimes when manufacturers put a lot in the exterior, they forget to put some extra time in the interior. So far, Storybooks Cosmetics has not done that. This is absolutely a great palette for the colors I used. Absolutely loved it. So if you wanna see how I created this eye look using this palette while answering my sister-in-law's 10 questions, Stay I tuned. did decide that I was going to wait till the weekend to do this eye look because A, I think it's way too bold to wear to work if it semi turns out the way I want it to. And B, it's just, it could be wild. Probably not, but definitely not for my work environment. Let's put it that way. So let's see what the first question is. She says, there are two doors. I must pick one. Also is given a description of, oh, also give y'all a description of why you picked the door you picked. Door number one has everything you ever wanted it. Life, money, 
fame and success, but if you walk through door number one, everyone you have ever known and loved will be gone. The memory of them will be there, but they will not. Door number two, all your loved ones are there. You're happy, but you struggle in life. Whatever you do, you just can't seem to get ahead. Money, success, and fame are always in the distance, but something you strive for but will never get. For me, that's an easy answer. While I would love life, money, fame, and success, I don't know what that's like, but I, as far as the people that I love that is close to me, it's not like I have a ton of people, but the ones that are in that inner circle of mine are so important to me, and I don't think that that would be worth changing over, losing them, and just keeping a memory of them, but never having them in my life, because some of my greatest many accomplishments in my world is that I get to call them, or I get to talk to them, or they get to be supportive, or they get to be. They are supportive of me even when sometimes I don't feel that I'm worthy of their support. So I, that one's kind of easy for me. I wouldn't want to give up those people in my life that I'm so close to that have really been wonderful to me. Now, if it said that I could be rich, keep those people in my life and get rid of the ones that have not been good to me, come on now, that would be the easier answer there. <laughs> Just kidding. Just, well, maybe just a little kidding. All right, let's see what the next if question is. You could only is. choose one makeup brand to use for the rest of your life, what would it be? I think that's a very unfair question. That really kind of limits who I would get to choose because some makeup brands that I absolutely love don't have foundation or you know, kind of the accoutrement for all the different types of stuff that I like wearing. So that kind of kicks out really some of my favorites because they just don't have the makeup line to go with them. So that's tough. So let me see, who would that leave? Because you got to have powders, you've got to have foundations, you got to have brow stuff. Hmm. So if I'm going to go, I guess, expensive. Or high end I probably would choose Mac and what's interesting is I don't have a lot of their products overall but because the products that I do use from them I really like I'm gonna assume that the rest of the products are fantastic also however if I was going lower end I would have to say be like maybe Revlon or Maybelline because I know they have everything that I would want to use. Hmm. I don't think I like that question. I need a do-over. I need a do-over. So yeah, that's kind of strange because I'm trying to think there's really no one as far as a makeup brand that has everything that I make sure I have everything of. I usually pick and choose the bits that I like from each brand to make my collection. With the exception of Makeup Geek, I mean, I have everything she's put out, but again, she doesn't have the foundations or the concealers or mascara. That was a really tough question. So I'm curious now that uh, Sabrina asked me that, what would y'all use as far as if you only had one brand of makeup to choose from, who would you use for the, the rest of your life? The third question is, growing up, we've all said or done something we wish we could take back. What would that be for you? So I've kind of learned by trial by fire, so that I probably have more than one. I do have more than one, but we're not going to talk about all of them. It's the one thing. I don't... So my one thing probably leads to is a behavioral problem. When I feel like I've been attacked or severely let down, I tend to totally withdraw. And that means whoever was part of that issue or challenge, I just pull away from totally. And sometimes I don't know how to fix whatever went sideways. So by withdrawing, 
it allows me not to hurt again. So, but I've often thought, well, what had you powered through with certain situations? Would you have had a better relationship with them? Because I've always told people in business, for some reason I do this better in business than I do in my personal life, is, you know, sometimes you can develop the best relationships during the hardest times because you really know how, you know, that you really get to earn your stripes during the hardest times. And I think for me, sometimes it's just, for family members, I feel like I don't understand why it has to be so hard. And I don't understand why people can be so mean and hold grudges. And for my family members that have always loved me no matter what, like they are my everything. They're my center of my world. But for those that continually let me down, you know, I withdraw and I guess I cut them out of my life. And I don't know that that's necessarily healthy. It's probably not healthy. But on the flip side, I don't want to stay and keep relationships that are false or fake in my life or for people that will just kind of take advantage of me. And so, I don't know, I'm kind of 50-50 on my behavior bit. I guess that's looking at it both sides of the coin. Hmm. I'm going to have to come back to that one. Sabrina, why'd you give me all the hard questions? I don't think I gave you any hard questions. And if I did, I'm excited because you done gave me some hard ones. Whew. It Let's says, see. if you could live the life of one famous person for a week, who would that person be? I have always either liked Julia Roberts or Sandra Bullock. And they both had tough bits in their lives. And they've, they've overcome personal issues, embarrassments. They're incredibly hardworking. They seem, which, you know, you can always show a great face in front of the cameras, but they, they really seem to love life and those around them that are in their life. So I would have to say I'd want to be one of those two. Now, given the fact that you only see the characters they play, you really don't know them as a person, I still think it'd be kind of fun. Especially if we got to look like them for a week also. And like, not just be them, but dang, could you imagine having Julia Roberts' hair? Or look like Sandra Bullock? Hello, who wouldn't want to do that for a week? So I'm adding on to your question, Sabrina. Not only do, do we get to be that person, but we get to look like them too. Okay, you're hey. throwing a dinner party. Name three people that you would love to be there. Make sure you give a description of why you want them to be there and how they would change the party. The, these people could be dead or alive, famous or non-famous. So having three people at a dinner party only, I'm gonna make the rules of who's already at the dinner party, okay? All my kids from the UK that I've been a foster, not a foster mom, a, a host mom too, they would automatically have to be there. And then my kids stateside would also have to be there. So I'm already making up my rules. Ooh, this has got some fallout. So I'm already making up my rules as far as who is at my dinner party because of course I want all my kids there. And I love all my kids. So that's gonna be my freebie. Then, gee, many Christmas, three people. Okay, so I have an aunt and I sometimes mention her in these videos that how much my aunt auntie means to me. So I'm gonna have to say that my aunt is gonna have to be there for sure. Because my aunt is kind of, she's always been a great friend and then but she's also been kind of a mom at times so I feel like she's got to be there now my brother and his family so I'm gonna lump them together that way I get all of them but I'm gonna lump them under him and his family because I feel like that way I can have more people at the dinner party <laughs> 
So of course I'm going to have, Sabrina, you're gonna have to be at my dinner party, I'm sorry, but you and the kids have to be there with Mitch. I'm gonna, I have to say my brother. And then, let's see, who else would I want at my dinner party? I would have to say that I would like my grandma Ecker to come back. And she has been passed for several years. My grandma Ecker was just, I need to do a video, a talk, a get ready with me video, just talking about her and our experiences together. That woman is crazy. And I think a lot of my ability to laugh or curse or just be kind of crazy me is because she was that way and she always loved me no matter what. And she allowed me to be who I am and she never judged that was that was amazing because I have a lot of family members that if you barely make a mistake they they hate you uh, and then they take sides and then if you're on the wrong side because you really don't want to get involved with their drama then you automatically get kicked out of their cool club so to speak so I would have to say that I would want my grandma Ecker back because she was a freaking hoot yeah, I need to do a whole separate get ready with me chatty video and just tell y'all about her in particular. And the reason why I would want all of them there. So my brother's family, all my kids worldwide, and well, my husband's already going to be there because like if we're throwing a party, I mean, he's always there. My auntie and my grandmother, really it's because the reason why I want them there is they are freaking hilarious. So they've got super twisted humor. Nothing is off the table as far as laughter goes. No one is exempt from getting teased. And I think that because the that group that I mentioned, we all love each other, truly love each other for who we are and appreciate each other's differences. And if we let one another down, we, you know, we kind of talk about it, we get through it healthy, and yeah. I mean, they just really know how to show true love, but they're funny as hell. So I remember one of my guy friends growing up coming over to my house and saying, you guys, because, I, you know, my family is absolutely crazy. He was like, you guys could be like on Comedy Central y'all are just hilarious and it really is because we do enjoy laughing together and teasing each other and there is no subject off limits we just really really enjoy being together so that was probably a long answer that was a really hard one now, if I got to name all the people that I'd want at the party first, and then the three additional ones, that probably would have been absolutely Would you easier. rather have perfect skin or a perfect body? I have neither. What would I do if I could have <laughs> one or the other? That would be an amazing experience because, again, I have neither. And let me stop here before I really get into question number six. So the reason y'all saw that I put a blue down before I put the red down, that was strategy. And the reason why is reds are beautiful typically in the pan. Absolutely stunning. But for some reason, red is one of those colors that have a very difficult time just putting on a surface. So it tends to... Even though it looks dark, when you add it to a surface, you can almost still see the surface below. So for anyone that's ever painted out there, like your home, if you got a red when reds were like the bomb to do, you usually got two colors to put on first. One was a pinkish color, almost like a Pepto-Bismol, to give kind of a red a brighter color, or you got a blue tone to put the blue up underneath and then put the red on top, the red will have more of a bluish tone, but it'll seem a lot more, oh, not opaque, um, a lot more matte, and you're not gonna have a bunch of streaks. So that is why I went in with the blue first, just to use that as my base color, so that when I pop the red on top of it, 
I got more a, of a bluish type red look, which is exactly what I had wanted. I've not tried the Sorcerer, is that it? Sorcerer on its own. I mean, it might be a good red, but for the most part, if you watch anyone that's tried to do reds and they only do reds, they're like, wow, it kind of turned out pink. I don't know what happened. Well, that's because you didn't use a darker base. And for me, blues tend to do a little bit better on my skin than pinks. So I went with the bluish undertone with the red. So sorry, I, I didn't explain what I was doing when I was first doing it. And that could have been a little confusing why I started with blue and then went to red. But it's just because I wanted a, a nice, beautiful red base. So there, how about that? Okay, so perfect body or perfect skin? I have neither. So what would I want? I think I'm gonna go with the perfect body because with all the makeup out there, I mean, I already don't have great skin. My skin looks terrible. I've got really pale skin, so any blemish or anything that's slightly off track just <laughs> Oh, buddy, you can see it from a mile away. And a perfect, I mean, you know, I don't have a perfect body either. But it'd really be nice to be able to wear some of those cool color or cool clothing. I can't, okay, so my body type is super funny. Y'all really don't see me unless you know me, which some of my friends and family are my YouTube audience. Thank you very much. But... Most of y'all only see kind of from the neck up. Well, let me explain my body type because it's kind of funky. Now, if you have this body type, don't be offended that I said it's funky because it's funky on me. Now, you may like this body type. I just don't like it on myself. So basically, I went to the doctor one time and they told me I had polycystic ovaries. And I was like, well, what's that? Because I don't know what that is. And he said... Have you ever seen women that look like a pumpkin? It was Halloween, so he picked up the pumpkin um, jar for the candy. So he holds it up and he says, and then they look like they have little stick arms, little stick legs, and a little stick for a neck. He said that's, and that's a sign that, um, that someone has uh, polycystic ovaries. And me and my husband were actually going to try to have a child together at this time. I looked over at my husband and I just started bawling. Like, I was like, oh my God, because at that time I was still young. I mean, I've always had a pot belly. Always, always, always had a pot belly. Didn't matter if I was 110 pounds soaking wet and I played sports. I always had a pot belly. So I look over at Rob and I just start bawling because I was like, oh my gosh, is he going to love me as a pumpkin in the future? So then fast forward to us being here in Texas. Well, he's not here yet. Hopefully in the next two weeks he'll be here. I have gained more weight than I ever have in my whole entire life. So I went and picked out some clothes for a haul video, which I still haven't taped. And I really thought the clothing was wrong. So I thought, well, damn, this clothing line really is mean to women. They're, they go up a size, like how, that's horrible, right? So I went and got a few other makers and <laughs> I'm at my all time high. I have now hit a new size level I've never been at before. And I do look like a pumpkin with little stick arms, little stick neck and little stick legs. And then on top of it, they're fluorescent white. Not a really pretty look. So for number six, the shortest question, I may have had the longest answer, but I'm going with the perfect body. I'd like to experience that, okay? I would love to not look like a pear or a pumpkin in my clothing. <laughs> so anyways, okay, this next one is really easy for me. Number it seven, says, black or white, which color would you choose and why? Okay, that one's way too easy. If anyone has looked in my closet, y'all know and for you, my friends that know this know that I really only shop at White House Black Market with the exception of that haul video that I was doing. So at White House Black Market, most of the clothes are exactly that, white and black. However, I always choose black over white. 
And you may think, well, why is that? And it's very simple for me. I have a very boisterous laugh. When I am tickled, sweet baby Jesus, you can hear my laugh through soundproof walls a mile away. It's just, it's an unfortunate thing, but I do have an extremely, extremely loud laugh. So what does that have to do with colors? Well, what it has to do with colors is the fact that I feel like if I wear white, I, I'm noticeable. Or I feel like if I use the color, any colors really other than black, I feel like it absolutely makes me stand out. And I hate that because I feel like my personality alone, because I, it's not that I mean to be loud, it just, it just happens. And this color is bewitched by the way that I'm using. So it's not, again, it's not like I'm trying to be loud. I just, I just am. And so I don't want to wear clothes that really make me stand out unless I want to stand out and that's rare. So I tend to go with black because black allows me, it makes me feel like I can hide and disappear and that just, I don't know, I, I just prefer that better. All right, let's see what else would you she's wear, got. Would you rather wear black grungy eyeliner or red lipstick every day? Hands down, black grungy eyeliner. I love messy hair. I love makeup that is not perfect. I love a smoky eye. I love... I love drag queens because drag queens just add so much makeup. And for someone that likes to kind of go into the background, you, you go, well, why do you love drag makeup? That makes you stick out. I don't know. I can handle wild makeup, my loud personality, but then let the rest of me disappear with the black. So really and truthfully, I would say that I would have to go with that black grungy eyeliner because that's sexy as hell. Not to say that a red lip isn't, but a red lip, okay, get this. The red lip makes me feel like I stand out. So once again, I can do wild everywhere else, but because the red lip makes me feel like I stand out, I can't do it. I know, I've got the weirdest, weirdest thing. Number nine is an easy question from her also. She gave me, she gave me a couple hard ones. Gave me a couple hard ones, no lies to tell there. But she did give me an easy one, which is, what does being successful mean to you? All right, side note, how is it that I have 20 million black pencil eyeliners in every dang color, and I, I trip over them every time I get ready in the morning, and now that I need a black liner, I can't find a dang one. Okay, here we go. Here's the Marc Jacobs. And I love the name on this, Blacker, because we got some black lacquer. So anyways, um, going back to, hell, I don't even know what my question was. Um, what does successful mean to you? Successful means to me, happy. To me, when my team members that I work with are happy, then that means that I've done something right as their leader. And that means that if they're happy, I'm happy. So that means I'm successful. If really I equal success with happiness, I just, I feel like if you truly have gotten comfortable in your own skin and you truly are happy, then that means you are successful. So success to me doesn't mean that it's money or planes or traveling. It because while all those things, well, I haven't had all those things, but I have had an opportunity to travel. While all those things are nice, really and truthfully, if you're not happy, then, then what do you really have? Not a lot. To me, success is equated with happiness. I know, I'm a goober. All right, what's next? Do you believe in aliens? Please be descriptive as to why or why not you do. To me, that's an easy one. So I do believe that there is something out there. By the way, we're gonna switch over to Coastal Scents Mineral Glitter in Ruby Slipper, and I had just applied the glittery glue from Too Faced. So going back to 
this alien conversation. If you've ever gone to a zoo and you get a chance to meet or see animals you never knew existed, or if you watch National Ge Geography, you get again to see animals you never thought existed. In my opinion, why wouldn't there, with as many living, breathing animals that there are on the planet that you didn't even know existed. So if you had, again, there's so many different animal types living and breathing that you may not have known even existed, then why wouldn't there be life outside of Earth? I just don't think we're that special that we are the only ones in the universe and that's as good as it gets. I don't know. I just don't. I have a hard time believing that one. So yes, I do believe in aliens. Do I believe they all are green with a bubble head? No. I'm sure there's as many other life forms out there as there are animals on the planet. Okay, I'm not doing good patting this glitter on. I have a feeling this is gonna be a hot mess. So I got one glittery eye on and one not so glittery eye. Okay, so what questions out of this did y'all like? You probably found out more about me than you had anticipated since I don't normally do these chatty videos, so to speak. But that was fun. So yay to Sabrina for thinking of that. But what were some of the questions? I'm curious, how would you have answered them? Do we have similar thoughts? Do you guys um, not be able to identify with my craziness at all? I just don't feel bad. I hope a lot of people can't identify with my craziness. So yeah, I'm kind of curious which one of those questions that Sabrina gave me hit home for you and how would you have answered them? All right, so now I'm gonna go with the Salon Perfect eyelashes. Took me a second there to let that sink in. What was I playing with and why? Okay, I will be honest with y'all. This was the first time I've ever used glitter and I suck at it. Holy crap. So I'm almost going to be embarrassed to put this video out there because in my mind, this look was going to be astonishing. Not because it was on me, just because of the red. And the reason it, that I wanted to do this look today, it is Sunday and it's football day. So I've got, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. So I was really hoping to find a good fan look to wear. And I thought the glitter was going to be easier to put on than it was and I, I need to touch up this side this side seems to have glitter this one or more contained which is what i actually wanted this one looks like it's a hot damn mess which is not what i wanted so i'm gonna have to try to put the glitter on the other side so it'll look like a hot damn mess also okay so let's try to get these bad boys on yeah i love football season it's fun every sunday rob and i like cook we call it chipple and dipple we really like our football. So someone is always doing something for football during football season. And sometimes we go to games, which for me is absolutely a blast. And we usually try to go to a new stadium every year. The Chiefs are playing in Texas this year. So super pumped about that. But what I'm not super pumped about is the Texas Stadium really loves themselves. You guys would not believe the ticket prices. And I mean, this is like nosebleed seats. At least at Arrowhead, if they're gonna put you in a nosebleed seat, they're also, you know, kind of a little bit kinder to you as far as price goes because you are in the nosebleed seats. Not so much here in Texas. They just like themselves a whole lot. And no offense to you Dallas people out there, don't get a hurt feeling. And no, I don't ever plan on becoming a Dallas fan. Oh, that would be absolutely embarrassing. I've been a Chiefs fan for longer than I care to admit. Mostly because I've spent a small fortune and probably own most of what they have in apparel for myself, my husband, and the dogs. That's all I'm going to say. We're fans. Okay, so now I'm going to put the Marc Jacobs on. Lately, this has been my go-to mascara. Thank you so much for watching this collaboration with Sabrina the Makeup Mom using Wizardry and Witchcraft by Storybook Cosmetics. And I 
answered probably 10 good questions as far as I don't know that they would be interesting facts because I don't find myself that interesting, but I hope that you enjoyed it nonetheless. Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing or refer me to a friend. And as always, you have a choice, so make it a great one. Until next time. Thank you so much for watching my video today using the 8-in-1 electronic manicure and pedicure kit. This was absolutely a great experience. I have always loved using products like these. In fact, I was so excited Rachel reached out to me to ask me to try one of their products because the, the one that I had been using actually for years had died so was super pumped about having a new one since my other one broke so thank you miss rachel to you and your team for sending this to me i really appreciate it for anyone that wants to order this i'm going to have rachel's link below so that you can order this through amazon again i cannot say thank you so so much for choosing me to review this product for you and I hope you guys have a great day. Until next time. Hello, my name is Amy Ecker and welcome to my channel. So I was contacted by Rachel Wang and her team who have a Amazon store. And she asked me if I would like to pick from numerous items and to do a review, an honest review, and try it out, see how it works. So we probably have been in contact since August. I wanna say early August, maybe late, se late September, gee many Christmas, late July. So why is it taking me this long? And sorry, Rachel and team, that it's taking this long, but my birthday was at the end of July. What does that have to do with this product? So my birthday was at the end of July. I wanted to do a quick manicure and I have the gel nail polish where you can put on the gel polish, you put it under lights, you stay there for about 60 seconds, blah, blah, blah. So did that so that my nails would look amazing for my birthday party. Well, then I did something absolutely stupid and it is something that you should never do using the gel nail polish which is to peel it off i had gotten i have a nervous habit sometimes of picking around my fingers and so i had picked up a spot on that nail polish and went ripped it right off and that messed up my nails so i realized that all the stuff to take off my nail polish was still in texas my bright idea was to, instead of just leaving my nails alone or going to the shop to go get more stuff, I didn't want to transport more product when I already knew I had it in Texas. So I peeled off all of the nail polish. Now when you peel off gel nail polish, it peels off your fingernails with, with them. So what did I do to my nails? Um, right now they're a hot mess. They're actually going to go get soaked right now and we are going to use the 8-in-1 manicure and pedicure kit very shortly. So like on, you can kind of tell where it's broke off the top here. This broke sideways. So basically this is sideways. This looks like a rat chewed on the edge. This is kind of sideways. Um, I'm missing divots in the tops of my nails. They're all different sizes. Oh, my thumbnail is hideous. And I do have makeup all up underneath my nails from finishing this look, so sorry for that. But anyways, I thought, you know what? I don't want to use the manicure and pedicure kit because I ruined my nails first. So if something on, because they're, they're breaking so easy and they're chopping in half and doing all kinds of weird stuff, I did not want to use the electronic pedicure, manicure and pedicure kit and have the viewers think that it's a bad kit. I'm already telling you 
that it it's my nails at this point because of what I did to them in July. So I had hoped by waiting this long, basically, what is it, a month and a half, that most of the bad stuff would have grown out. And I mean, I still have like chipping on top. I mean, they're just pathetic. And that drives me nuts because I normally don't have issues with my nails. So long story short, I kept looking at this going, I've got to do something with my nails. I hate going to work and having my nails look this bad. So I'm going to go ahead and use this before my nails grow out totally and are back to 100% Amy nails. So when you are going to watch this video, if something goes crazy, like a piece of a nail flying off, understand that's my nails right now because of that peeling that gel nail polish off. But I decided, you know what? My nails really are tore up bad. So what better way to test a product that if your nails are absolutely bad and not in their best shape, how does this product hold up to it. So at first, while I felt guilty, and that's why it's taken me so long to get here, Rachel, I'm sorry, um, is I was afraid that because my nails were in such a bad spot that it would give a bad impression on a product that could be great. And I didn't want to do that unfairly. But I will say, I need help with my nails. My nails are tore to hell right now. So I'm actually hoping that this eight in one electronic or electric manicure pedicure set actually helps my nails. And that's what actually turned my thought process alone on videotaping my nails um, getting used by this. So I'm actually going to be putting this baby to the test because my nails are tore to hell. So anyways, with that being said, and I'm sorry if hell offends anyone, didn't mean to be offensive, but with that said, I'm going to go ahead and go soak my nails right now, use a brush to clean them on top and underneath, and then I'm going to get started using this, and you guys are going to see how well does this do on some really, really bad nails. So get ready to have a good time. Let's go.